Is that her? That's them. Yes, mm. they're off. This is West mm. Hanley in Oxfordshire. This is Jean and David. That was Philippa and her partner Fletch being whisked away. How far have they gone? They've gone to York. So, so they're well out of the way. There's no danger of them coming back. No, nope, absolutely not. All we know is the danger. This time, it's a mum and dad, David and Jean Orme, who contacted us wanting to surprise their daughter, Philippa, with something she's always wanted in the garden, a rockery. Uh, Philippa also has a strange fantasy involving me. So, the reason that I wrote in was because she just kept on saying, what I want to do is come home from a conference, nice. and I keep thinking, will I walk into the garden and find Alan Titchmarsh handing me a glass of wine? She did. And she did. Yeah, yeah. Every time she comes <laughs> So, it's nice to make somebody's dream come true, isn't it? Yeah. It, it looks so much smaller. Yeah. Crumbs. Well, well, this is obviously the place for the rock garden. This is it. Um, and I think what we need to do is to adjust the curve on the lawn so the lawn does still lead towards that pergola as a kind of backstop. I've done a sketch um, of the kind of thing we might have. What do you think? That oh, is... my word. I thought we have these terraces of rock using local stone, yeah. um, alpines in the crevices, Japanese maples, which are so lovely at this time of year, mm -hmm. fresh opening, light filters through them to give it a bit of bulk. The waterfall cascading down there, this is Charlie's speciality, into this yeah. crystal pool, again surrounded with rock, and using the lawn as its edge. Uh, are we likely to get help from himself over the fence? I don't know his name, but he's uh, old and friendly, oh, like my old man. Thank you very much. <laughs> They're all old and friendly around it. <laughs> now then, the thing is, we weren't able to get Philippa in the garden, obviously because she's a smell of a rat, because people know about ground force now, yeah. so we buttonholed her. Our researchers asked her about cheap booze from the continent, killing off the country pub. Do you feel about that? Um, I don't know, I think that... If you enjoy going to the pub, you'll still go, even if you buy your cheap beer for Christmas and special occasions and drink it at home. I think people will still go to the pub because they enjoy, they enjoy being in the pub. There's somebody who goes to the pub a lot but still buys cheap beer when he can get on with it. Fletch, Philippa's partner, knows what we're up to but is sworn to secrecy. Is there some significance in this talk about pubs then? Do they like their locals? Oh, indeed. They do, they yes. Do, yes. As indeed we all do, yes. They're regulars. So we'll be down there then before we yes. finish this. Oh, yes, absolutely. I want to make sure that we're giving her the kind of thing she wants. Is it a really natural rock garden with a pool and water? That was her mm -hmm. idea. Absolutely. Yes. She, yes. she has actually had a dream of sort of sitting out here Extremely and, right. and yeah. listening to the water. Yeah, Tommy, can we have a retaining wall down the back of some description just so I can come up a bit? Yeah, I think you're going to need one anyway to protect this fence. You won't go right up to the fence, though, will we? Come if we do it in a bit, bit from the fence um, and then and maybe curve round slightly. Yeah. <laughs> we were just talking about that. <laughs> they go away, they take unilateral decisions, you know, ignoring me, and, well, of course, I can say no. <laughs> but I think it's a good idea. <laughs> so two days and £1,000 to create a bit of the Dales for a lass with Yorkshire roots. Well, on these jobs, it's good to have as much help as you can possibly get. This is Jeremy, who's Philippa's brother. In-law. In-law. Close. <laughs> That's Sam over there, who is wisely asleep while it's all going on. Sam won't want to be asleep long, not with our hired stripper shaping the lawn. He won't want to miss us tearing up the patio that Fletch had told us on no account to touch. He certainly would want to see Charlie wrestling these old pipes out of the ground. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> There's just so much to watch and enjoy. You can't have a rockery without rocks, so Tommy and Charlie have gone rock shopping. Oh, Hello. you're quick. Yeah, will you, you come in? All right, pleased to meet you. I'm what Charlie. can we do for you? We're after a bit of rock. OK, we've got what some over got? here if you'd like to have a look at. What, rockery stone? Yeah, really. Okay. This is uh, Tommy. Nice to, you. nice to meet you. These are all locally produced uh, materials. Is this uh, sandstone or limestone? No, this is a sandstone which is produced at one of our quarries where they're um, processing sand and they dig them up, steam clean them, and uh, we bring them out and sell them to the public from here. Mm. Right. All right. Have you got any crushed stone to match this so we can? Yeah, we've got a yeah. selection over there. All right. Now with this stuff, we'll need about four or five tonnes. Would you be able to get it over to us this morning sometime? No problem at all. Right, it's very important, that. What we got here, we've got a couple of tonne here, haven't we? Yeah, about that, yeah. What do you think of that, then? Lovely. And that one? Yuck. Lovely. That's it, that's a deal. We've been a rush no, I don't because... like that one. I think that's horrid. 
I, just I thought you'd use the both of them. Yeah, but it looks a bit red now. This is worse than Alan. <laughs> All right, well, we'll take that. We'll leave that one. We've got to get going because Alan's probably halfway to Sydney. <laughs> It may seem a bit odd to send Charlie and Tommy off, but uh, we need the local stone. We've got local help here from David and from Jeremy and from Tommy's right-hand man, Willie. And when you've got Willie on the job, you don't really need anybody else. I had a feeling when I got up this morning it was going to be one of those days. I thought, no, it won't because the sun's shining, it's all fine, but it is going to be one of those days. A bit of drain pipe. I've got some nice stone. I've got a nice drain. Oh, great. Oh, what have you done? <laughs> what? It, that was my spade. Five minutes and look I at the know, trouble you get. I know. We've tested the soil pipe. We've flushed the loo. There's nothing coming down it there. Right. But then it shouldn't do. They're all main drains. What do you found, Willie? Well, it looks like an old manhole that's been filled in. Probably the old septic tank then going down here. May have been, yeah. There definitely was a septic tank, Doris. So There's down where the concrete was. So that is the drain that leads to the tank. So it's completely dead now then, Doris, there's nothing... Completely dead. Were they all on septic tanks once? Yeah, we all had our septic tanks, but each one, when they were bought off, they went onto the sewer then, you see. But it's all rubbish down there now? That's all dead. <laughs> Full of rubbish. I'll dig it up then. <laughs> That's all we needed to know. <laughs> Good heavens, a post. That's a long two foot. Oh, these are heavy. <laughs> well, they only had seven there. foot posts, right? So you're going to cut them? We cut them in half. That means two foot out of the ground and 18 inches underneath. He's quick, isn't he? He's is, yes. very quick. Do you know, it's quarter past 12. What have we got to show for it? A broken drain and a dent in the ground. Cool. And all my shelves dug out when I didn't want them dug out. <laughs> By cutting the full-length concrete posts in half and slotting in concrete fence panels, Tom is making a stout retaining wall for the back of the rock garden. Just a quick job, quoth he. Half an hour at tops. I'm always terribly wary about importing topsoil because a garden should really have its own soil and nobody else's, said the purist. But here, where you want to build a raised rock garden, as we do, I've got to bring a bit in just to lift it a bit. Not so it's a great mountain, but just so there's a bit of level to it. So this is good local topsoil of a similar type to the garden soil, so it won't stand out too much. That's it. There you are, Alan. That's it. Bingo. Bingo. <laughs> two o'clock. Before you start, it was subject to some changes. There was only supposed to be two sections. There is now five. Half an hour. Five sections. Five. five sections in half an hour. One, oh, right, two, okay. three, four, five. <laughs> Isn't yeah, numerous wonderful? Parties. High time for the pond liner. Charlie's already smoothed sand inside the hole to protect the butyl liner from sharp stones in the soil. There's also a plastic covered ridge board to give the pond a beach eventually. We've carefully calculated this, haven't we? This is a butyl liner good for 20 years or more, and once it's smoothed and covered at the edge, you won't know it's there. Butyl liners can come in any size, up to reservoir proportions, and you can ask at the garden centre for them to calculate the area you need. Hooray! Hi, all right. Hello, how are you? I see ya. And you. Where's it from? Uh, Sydney for Corrie, just about three miles away. So it couldn't be more local then? No, that's right, no. Three miles away, so can I get up and have a look in? Crikey, they're enormous. They're huge. Slightly daunting, but exciting too. This is going to be one superior rock garden. But to handle such rocks, you need one of these. It's a skid steer hired locally. really worrying. <laughs> Hernias. One of those in Charlie's pool and we're in deep trouble. Look at how 
them. Once in the garden, it has to be down to levers to shift them about. Fine adjustment of position is everything. You don't have a free foot, come on. It's very tempting to think these are just toys for big boys, but they're not. You've got to learn how to handle them. And then it's really fingertip controls, and they make lugging large lumps of rock like this much easier. Without this, we just could not have made a rock garden with these decent-sized lumps of rock. And these really are great rocks on Ilkenor Bar Tat, loosely translated, none of your tat here. Oh, please make the plank stay one That's tipping forward. I know it is. <laughs> With rocks weighing up to half a ton, it's important they're well bedded onto a compacted surface. Right. To oh, well done. Tommy becomes the king of rock gardens. But, uh, we wanted it. There's a scene here. Take it to the scene. Okay. This section of liner forms the back of Charlie's waterfall, with a pipe from the pond pump taken up behind it and rocks positioned in front, this is the trickiest bit to get right. There's nothing worse than a leaky waterfall or a lump of black liner showing. You don't need this back bit, do you? You're only going to bring it up underneath, aren't you? While you if the rocks don't quite come together in front, then some mortar covers the liner and small rocks wedge in at the top. If that then goes down a bit in there, this has been the biggest fiddle, i.e. fiddling around, ground force has ever done. A big bit of rocks take big fiddling. What we want here, we've got the pipe from the pump coming back up here, disgorging its load into here, which gives us a bit of a little top header tank. And it's going to flow over there into a waterfall. What do you reckon? I reckon it's brilliant. Yeah? Uh, yeah, I think it's going to just knock her out when she sees that. Looks like a heap of stones to me at the moment. No. Who's this? This is Craig, Culliper's son. He lives here, so... Were you in on this as well then, Craig? Yeah. You're part of the subterfuge, are you? Yep. Are you going to ring your mum and um, have a word? Yes, he's yep. just going to ring her now. Oh, hello, Mum, it's me. I'm fine, thanks. Yes, yeah, it's been brilliant. Now I need to feed Charlie. OK. See ya. Bye. Just one thing. You came here to feed Charlie. <laughs> what about me and Tommy? Is there another Charlie around here? <laughs> Dark cat. All right, it's a relief. I thought you got a special arrangement here and he just blown the gaff. <laughs> well, look, Tommy's nearly finished his pointing. If ever there was a man in need of food and drink and refreshment, it's him. So I think we'll, we'll pack it in for today. How are you going? All right? Nearly done. That's it. Just a little bit. Uh, my friend. Where'd you get that from? It's under the head. Oh, he's drunk. Oh, well, Tommy brought his dad with him today then. Are you done? Oh, oh he yeah. won't like that. <laughs> he Come won't on. like that. Time you had a drink, it's all getting rather tense. See you tomorrow, Garden. <laughs> A peaceful Oxfordshire village in the early morning. Gone are the farmers to the fields and the commuters to the cities. Left are the landlord to his slumbers, gnomes to their reflections, but the ground force team toils on. Still the topsoil comes in, piled up high against the retaining wall, danced into place, and then the last few rocks are shifted into their allotted positions. If you read old gardening books that talk about rock gardening, there, there are wonderful things written. There's a chap called Reginald Farrer, who was from the Yorkshire Dales, he lived at Ingleton, and uh, he used to talk about rock gardens that looked like dogs' graves and plum puddings, you know, a mound of soil dotted with little bits of rock. Um, and in those days, they were terribly sniffy about everything and said that each piece of rock should be buried for at least two-thirds its size, which is wonderful if you've got six servants and an endless income and you can afford to bury it. Nowadays, we have to be a bit more wily and use things like breeze block and brick, provided your soil is really well firmed and rammed and these become a part of just the structure on the underside and you don't see them. I think it's 
is perfectly acceptable, so sorry, Reggie Farrah. This gravel beach will be a lifeline for any wildlife that tumbles in, but it's a bit mucky. We will pump the pond out again, I think, after this, and just uh, clear the water a little. Otherwise, she'll come back and think, ah, oh, Cleopatra bathing in ass's milk, and she'll whip it all off and be in there before you can say budding knife. Meanwhile, Will is attacking more of Fletch's patio. He's actually digging a trench for the power lead for the pond pump. This is a submersible pump that feeds the piping concealed behind the rocks. Having finished on the patio, Will's now having a go at Fletch's conservatory, but the wire's got to get in somehow. Careful jiggery-pokery up here at the front means that you'll never suspect there's a pipe round the back. Fletch, how are you? I'm all right. I only know you by name and reputation and by your patio. And, and the words that were given to me when we arrived were, Fletch says, touch his patio and you're dead. Yes? <laughs> but is she, has she suspected anything? Not, not, a, not a whisper. All right, well, I'll see you not a minute before five. <laughs> It's ten minutes to twelve, day two. All the rock is now in. It's all coming. We've got it all. We've laid it out, so that's pleasing. Charlie's uh, fiddling around with a pump. We're about to try the waterfall. The level's gone down deliberately because she's cleaning out the water, but uh, it's beginning to come together. What do you think? Looking great. Absolutely fantastic. Now, does it remind you of home? Are we talking Yorkshire here? I think we're talking Cow and Calf, Ilkley Moor. Well, you see, born and brought up underneath the shadow of it. I was born on Ilkley Moor. Mm. That's it, and it's influenced you. It has. Ever since. <laughs> we'll take that. The pond pump is wired through an earth leakage circuit breaker for safety. Put it back in, turn it on, and press the reset button. Hooray! And it even comes out of two places at once. It took Fletch a month of Sundays to lay his precious patio. Tommy's got just an hour and a half left to put it back. It looks like it's just starting to rain. I thought I was perspiring a bit freely. Cool, look at that cloud. It's like we did all the really muddy stuff first. <laughs> Gravel by the bucket load, gravel by the barrow load. It's going to be all over the rockery to a depth of one inch. It's got to be placed carefully around each plant and between the big rocks to give the appearance of a natural scree slope. Fletch? Yes. Yes, but not before five o'clock. Wonderful. All right. Bye-bye. Right. So what's going to happen now? When we come through the door, I'm going to say, you must come through the conservatory. And then, almost me, as soon as I hit the conservatory, say, you know how you used to say, I hope when I come home, I shall find Alan Titchmarsh in my garden handing me a glass of champagne. Well. <gasps> and then oh, it's over to you. Oh, crumbs, I'm, the rockery. I'm quite excited myself <laughs> now. <laughs> Go on then, good luck. Okay. Well, thank you for your help. Oh. It's been a good thank laugh. Thank you. Laugh. I mean, it's sensational. It's pouring on us now, but it stops the time she comes. Don't walk on the gravel. Don't walk on the slabs. Oh. No, right round there. Oh. And down the grass. <laughs> right, I've just brought Philippa's car back. Ah. Because we shall need to have it on the drive. It was here when she left. Yeah, but don't pull it right up here, because what we want to do is to pull our big white van up to block this yes. so that she can't see it. Uh -huh. Jean knows this, and she's going to say to her that next door are doing some work and they've had to park yeah. a van in our drive. All right. Oh, the subterfuge. <laughs> Take the wind out yourself, that. No, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but go on, you can go and get the car, but just don't block the drive okay, yet. OK, will well, do. Good luck, David. Right, team, you've got about half a hour. Oh, great. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Alan Titchmarth in your garden, handing you a glass of champagne. Mm. Well... <laughs> you see, somebody said that you had this dream, <laughs> or was it a nightmare? <laughs> oh, God! Where you came back and... <gasps> That's just... Right. That's fantastic. Look, this is Tommy. Hi. <laughs> and this is Charlie. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> and that's Oh, my God, I'm yours. shaking. So. Oh, God. It's gorgeous, isn't it? And this must be the just, fabled Fletch. I'm just going <laughs> to check my patio. Don't, Don't go on those two there. <laughs> <laughs> to all of you who've helped, and especially my rat and men here, Charlie and Tommy, <laughs> and to you, Philippa, you're Cheers. very good health. Enjoy your garden. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Till next time, from all those on Ground Force, bye-bye. Cheers. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I never knew that the secretary of the local WI could lie like your mother. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs>